the geological anatomy of Canada, the way the mountain belts and the flatter, more stable areas of the continent are arranged is typical of most continents. What is not typical is that the rocks, the bedrock in Canada, is generally speaking very much better exposed than the bedrock of most other continents. And the reason for that is the last ice age. The ice of 10,000 years ago simply cleared off a great deal of the soil which normally covers the bedrock of most continents. So Canada is a good place to look at, or a good place for a case study of the geological makeup, the geological, geological anatomy of continents. Now, the tools which geologists use in order to interpret the anatomy, the geological anatomy of an area, whether it's a continent or a township, are geological maps. And a geological map consists of a normal geographic map on which geological data have been plotted. And the kind of data which are plotted on the map are things like dip and strike, which gives the orientation of the rock which a geologist is observing, and then also the rock type, whether it's a sandstone or a limestone or a shale or a granite or a basalt or whatever. This is also recorded on the map. And then finally, if it's possible, the age of the rock, not in years, but in the system to which the rock belongs. Now, this is, of course, not very often possible with something like a basalt or igneous rocks, which have to usually be dated radiometrically, but it is commonly possible with sedimentary rocks. So that's the kind of data which goes on to a geological map, whether it's a map of a continent or a township. Let's have a look at a map of a continent, of Canada. The first thing which is obvious on this map are the areas of different colors. Now, colors are used generally to represent rock of different type or rock of different age. It's, it's rather like putting together a picture by numbers. The kind of rock is represented by a particular color or the age of rock is represented by a particular color, and all the places where a geologist finds rock of the same age or the same type are joined together, and what results then are areas, patches, bands, or whatever of the same color. That's easily visible on the map. Let's have a look at it. Here is a blue band lying on the southwestern shore of Hudson's Bay. That blue band represents Ordovician strata. Here is part of the Canadian shield, which is pink, dominantly pink. That pink represents granitic rock. Here, around Lake Winnipeg, more of a blue band. Again, Ordovician rock. Here, a slightly different color, a gray, Silurian, a light blue, Devonian, and away across the prairies, this green color, this very broad band of green color, is Cretaceous rock. And then into the Rockies, once again, blues, Ordovician. Reds, representing granites. Greens, representing Cretaceous. More red around the area of Vancouver, representing again granite, and out to Vancouver Island. More greens and reds. That kind of geological information the age of rocks plotted according to color is also done on entirely different scales, of course. In this map of Pennsylvania, where the scale is one inch to four miles instead of one inch to 80 miles, as it is on the map of Canada, the different rock types, which is what these colors represent, are also arranged in a pattern, in a very, very clear pattern. Now, what do those patterns represent? What does that bird's eye view of the geological surface of Canada or of Pennsylvania represent? What produces those patterns? Well, to answer that question, we must look at the effect of erosion on geological structures. 
Remember that one of the most important structures in the Appalachian Mountains are folds, and declines and synclines. Now, what happens to a fold when it's eroded? Well, let's do that with a plasticine model. This is an anticline. Each of the different layers of plasticine representing a different rock type. Now, to erode it, we would do something like this. In other words, take off the top of the anticline. What are we left with on the eroded surface? We're left with a parallel arrangement of bands of different rock type. If you were to date by collecting fossils, if they were sedimentary rocks, those bands, we'd find that the oldest was in the center, and then on either side, younger rock, farther out, younger still, and farther out, younger yet again. So there's a very definite pattern to the surface produced by erosion of an anticline, and the same thing of a syncline. Looking back at that map of Pennsylvania, I think that you can recognize the synclines and the anticlines of the Pennsylvania area eroded down to the same kind of pattern as we produced in the Plasticine model. Faulting, as well as folding, also produces patterns that are recognizable on an eroded surface. Let's look at this model. Here is a surface pattern of some simply dipping strata. The oldest and then successively younger strata lying on top of it. Now then, let's fault with a normal fault that area. There's the fault, a road away the higher land. There is the pattern that's produced. Notice that the fault runs parallel to the strike of the strata. In other words, parallel to the orientation of the individual beds. Notice that the yellow bed here is repeated on the other side of the fault. Then the red and the successively younger strata one after another. And right at the fault, young rock is present against older rock. The yellow strata, stratum originally lying beneath the gray one. 